Welcome, and thank you for joining me for this World Skills Master Cam tutorial series, Machining Your Part. Last episode, we went over the process for setting up the second side, including setting up a new plane, view sheet, and toolpath group. In this episode, join me as we walk through both the roughing and finishing operations for the second side. For the second side, we will be following a similar machining strategy as before. Starting off with a face toolpath, which could be found under the 2D gallery. Use the wireframe selection method and set the mode to C plane. With the chain selection highlighted, select the top edge of the stock boundary. Select OK to exit the chaining dialog box and launch the face toolpath page. Now, we will be using the same 10mm flat end mill and cut parameters for this facing operation. Under the linking parameters page, select the depth button, then select the top face of the solid. Select OK to generate the toolpath. The next toolpath to set up is the Opti Rough toolpath, which is found under the 3D gallery suite. Here, use the Select Entities option, then Window Select the whole model, and select Enter. Back in the Opti Rough toolpath page, ensure the wall stock to leave is 0.2 millimeters and the floor stock to leave is 0.1 millimeters from the previous operations. Since this toolpath retained the previous settings, go to the stock page and turn off rest material. This ensures the toolpath does not convert to an Opti Rest remachining operation. Go to the toolpath control page and select the boundary chain. Use the wireframe selection method to select the top chain. Then set the strategy as from outside. Move down to the tool page and select the 10 mm flat end mill. Under the cut parameters page, set the optimize step ups option to next closest if it isn't already. Then make sure the step up checkbox is turned on as this will help remove material left behind. The steep shallow page is where we set the minimum and maximum depth for the toolpath. First, make sure both settings are turned on, then set the minimum depth to positive 40 millimeters as this is the Z depth that the facing operation machined to. Now, use the maximum depth selection to select the flat and update the depth to positive 22 millimeters. Once we are finished, select OK to generate the toolpath. For the flats and octagon on the outside, set up a 2D dynamic mill found under the 2D gallery suite. The chain options dialog box displays as there is a variety of regions we can select. Starting with the machining region, select the arrow to display the chaining dialog box. Using solid selection and the loop method, select the outside edge of the flat. Select OK to save the selection. Set the machining region strategy to from outside and for the avoidance region, use the arrow to open the chaining dialog box again. Using the solid selection and loop method, select the bottom edge of the octagon, then select OK to accept the selection. Back in the chain options dialog box, use the preview chains option to double check the region's selection. If needed, right click and use the top view to get a better view of the display. The red and black crosshatch indicates the material that will be removed. The blue fill indicates safe areas for the tool to move, and the yellow line is the tool containment boundary. Select OK to exit the Chain Options dialog box and go into the Dynamic Mill Toolpath page. Go to the tool page and select the 6mm flat end mill. Under the Cut Parameters page, ensure the stock to leave for walls and floors is set to zero. On the Linking Parameters page, Set the top of stock to absolute 40 millimeters. Make sure the depth is set to incremental zero. Select OK to generate the toolpath. If needed, right click and select isometric to get a better view of the toolpath. Under the 2D gallery, expand the list and select the circle mill toolpath under the hole making category. With the toolpath hole definition function panel open, select the bottom edge of the bore, grabbing the arc center. Select OK to exit the function panel and enter the circle mill toolpath page. Under the tool page, select the 6mm flat end mill. Since we are using the same tool as the dynamic mill that ran previously, we will need to turn on the force tool change checkbox. With this turned on, 
the machine will safely retract the tool to the home position after running the dynamic mill toolpath and before the circle mill toolpath. Moving down to the cut parameters, make sure to set the stock to leave on the walls and floors to zero. Go to the roughing page. Turn on the roughing checkbox and turn off the helical entry. Since the bore is roughed out and the center hole was machined to size on the first side, we can feed straight down and begin the cut. On the finish page, select the semi-finished checkbox and change the number and spacing as needed. Also, select the keep tool down checkbox to prevent the tool from retracting out of the hole in between the semi-finish and finish passes. For the linking parameters, set the top of stock to absolute 40 millimeters. The depth is updated by the solid model selection. Select OK to generate the toolpath. Lastly, let's check out another way to create a chamfer for the part. This time, go to the 2D gallery and select Contour. When the chaining dialog box opens, use the solid selection. Turn off loop and ensure the face method is turned on. Now, select the top face. Using the face method grabs both the bore and the octagon edges. Select OK to accept the geometry. On the tool page, select the 10 mm chamfer mill. Under the cut parameters page, the first thing to do is select the contour type dropdown and select 2D chamfer. Now that the parameters have been changed, set the chamfer width to 0.3 mm. Set the radio button to a top offset and set that to 0.5 mm. Under the linking parameters, make sure the depth is set to incremental zero as the depth of the chamfer is set from the cut parameters page. Select OK to generate the toolpath. Well, that is all the time we have for this episode. Thank you for joining me and be sure to continue the series as we begin to simulate the operations and walk through generating the G-code.